Hello, and welcome back to Amateur Money, your go-to channel for all things personal finance. If you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more insightful videos. Today, we're diving headfirst into a topic that's often misunderstood, yet crucial to our personal finances, income taxes. We're not just skimming the surface. We're going deep into the nitty-gritty to demystify income tax, what it means, how it's calculated, and how we can ethically and legally optimize our tax payments. So, let's get started. Firstly, let's understand what income tax really means. It's a portion of your income that you pay to the government. In the United States, income taxes are a critical source of funding for public services such as education, healthcare, public safety, infrastructure improvements, and governmental operations. So, every time you drive on a road, send your kids to school, or enjoy a public park, remember, it's partly funded by income taxes. Income that's subject to tax can be broadly categorized into three types, earned income, unearned income, and business and farm income. Earned income is what you make from working. This includes wages, salaries, tips, bonuses, and other taxable employee pay. For instance, if you're a teacher earning $60,000 annually, that's your earned income. If you're a waiter who receives tips, remember, tips are also taxable income. Unearned income includes income from sources other than work, like interest from savings or bonds, dividends from investments, and capital gains from selling assets, including stocks or real estate. For instance, if you make a $1,000 profit from selling stocks, that's a capital gain and is considered unearned income. Business and farm income refers to the profit or loss you make from running a business or farm. If you run a flower shop and make a profit, that's your business income, which is also taxable. Now, let's talk about tax brackets. The United States has a progressive tax system, meaning the more you earn, the higher your tax rate. In 2023, there are seven tax brackets, starting from 10% and going up to 37%. But remember, just because you fall into the 22% tax bracket doesn't mean all your income is taxed at 22%. Only the income above the threshold for that bracket is taxed at the higher rate. This is a common misconception, so keep that in mind. For instance, let's say you're a single filer earning $50,000 in 2023. The first $9,950 is taxed at 10%, the next $30,575 is taxed at 12%, and the remaining $9,475 is taxed at 22%. So, you might be wondering, how can you reduce your tax liability? Enter tax deductions and credits. Tax deductions lower your taxable income. For instance, if you earn $60,000 and claim a $10,000 deduction, you'll be taxed on $50,000, not your original income. Common tax deductions include the standard deduction, state and local taxes deduction, and home mortgage interest deduction. Tax credits, on the other hand, directly reduce your tax bill. If your tax bill is $2,000 and you have a $500 tax credit, you'll need to pay $1,500. Common tax credits include the child tax credit, the American Opportunity Tax Credit, and the Lifetime Learning Credit. It's important to note that some credits are refundable. This means they can reduce your tax liability to zero and can even result in a tax refund. The Earned Income Tax Credit EITC, is a good example. It's designed to help low to moderate income individuals and couples, especially those with children. But, while we're covering the basics here, it's crucial to remember that everyone's tax situation is unique. The U.S. tax code is a massive, complex document, with many exceptions, provisions, and special cases. It's always a good idea to consult with a tax professional or use trusted tax software to ensure you're accurately reporting your income and maximizing your deductions and credits. Now, let's dive a bit deeper. Itemized deductions are another aspect of the tax system. These are specific expenses that the IRS allows you to take which reduce your taxable income. They include medical expenses, state and local taxes, salt, mortgage interest, and charitable contributions, among other things. However, to benefit from itemizing your deductions, they need to exceed the standard deduction for your filing stats. Tax credits are not just limited to individuals. There are also tax credits for businesses. For example, the Work Opportunity Tax Credit, WOTC, 
is a federal tax credit available to employers for hiring individuals from certain targeted groups who have consistently faced significant barriers to employment. Similarly, the Research and Experimentation Tax Credit R&D credit, is a general business tax credit for companies that incur research and development R&D, costs in the United States. Further, there are also tax-advantaged accounts you can use to save for retirement and healthcare expenses, which can further reduce your tax liability. Examples include 401ks and IRAs for retirement, and health savings accounts HSAs, or flexible spending accounts FSAs, for healthcare expenses. However, these accounts come with their own rules and contribution limits, so it's important to understand how they work before you start contributing. The Alternative Minimum Tax AMT, is a parallel tax system designed to prevent high earners from using certain tax benefits to pay very little or no tax. It's calculated separately from your regular tax and includes some income that isn't subject to regular tax and disallows some regular tax deductions. If the AMT is higher than your regular tax liability, you're required to pay the higher amount. Finally, remember that penalties can be incurred for late payment or underpayment of taxes, so always aim to pay your tax bill on time. If you can't pay your tax bill in full, contact the IRS to explore payment options. They're usually willing to work with you. In conclusion, the U.S. income tax system is complex, and this video just touches on the basics. It's important to continue learning and stay updated on changes in tax laws. Always consult with a tax professional or use reliable tax software to ensure you're making the most of your income and deductions and are in compliance with the law. This is a crucial part of financial literacy and can lead to more informed financial decisions. Conclusion Understanding income tax can feel daunting, but with a bit of knowledge and planning, you can navigate the tax season with confidence. Remember, everyone's tax situation is different, and it's always a good idea to consult with a tax professional if you're unsure about anything. We hope you found this video informative. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more money wisdom. Also, don't forget to comment your experiences related to income taxes. Until next time, this is Amateur Money, helping you make sense of sense.